Okay, so hello everybody and uh, welcome to the Al Brooks' uh, live trading room. I understand that Al Brooks is uh, on stage in Florida and I've been given the range for the day. My name is Tom Hugart. Before we start, no, as we start, there's something that I need to uh, make you aware of is and that the prices that you're seeing here are what's called CFD prices. That's the platform that I trade and that is a little different if you are trading futures. And I think the best way of illustrating that is through I have a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, oh, by hand. There you go. Quite update that. So I use a broker called uh, TD365. And the same would be applying if you other use other European CFD brokers. But what you'll see is that our price is a little different. What you'll see here is the uh, the rolling cash right now. Dow is trading at 32,239.40. I'm trading on a one point spread. But if you're trading futures, your prices will be approximately 30, 40, about 40 points higher. So say that the uh, so say that the the Dow right now is trading at thirty thousand thirty two thousand two hundred and twenty futures prices will then be trading at thirty two thousand two hundred and sixty sixty five thereabouts. Okay. Uh, additionally, I don't know how to view questions and the like, so I uh, probably should have had a crash course in go to webinars before I started this. But I trade predominantly the US Dow Jones. The reason why I'm doing that is that although I can trade it at uh, my broker as well, it's actually cheaper for me to trade the Dow. And as you can see, there are differences in how they act. Now Dow is making a new fresh high for the session, whilst the S&P 500 is not doing that. As I found out, fact, one of my friends uh, once taught me a little strategy he had that he always looked at the S&P 500, the Dow and the Nasdaq at the same time as one index failed to make a high uh, and the two others, sorry, if one index made a high and the two others failed to make a high, then that was a short sell. So he would be a seller of the, the Dow Jones here. Um, but I don't know how the other uh, um, hosts usually do it, but I will trade live and I will um, call it out as it happens. So with that being said, if you don't mind, I'm gonna get into game mode. Thank you. Someone's just asked me if you could join the Al Brooks trading. Oh, well, I'll ask Al Brooks. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with me. Um, doc control panel, yeah, that's the one. Get, oh man, how do I get rid of this? Okay, so we double top in the NASDAQ. Crap, you can't see that. You will need to see that over here. So we double top of the NASDAQ. This is on the 10 minute chart. Uh, I want to be a seller below 50. So please bear in mind that. Okay, so stand by in the NASDAQ. Stand by for a sell in the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is trading at 58. And I want to be a seller at 48. Get there. Can you stand by? Selling NASDAQ here at 49, 48. I've, I've sold the NASDAQ short. Dow is making new highs. NASDAQ is making new lows. Okay. Take profit in NASDAQ. Whoa, yeah, to be fast, but take uh, some profit in NASDAQ. Got about 10, 15 points. Sorry, I, I probably for the benefit of the people uh, in the Al Brooks trading room, I need to explain to them what the hell I'm doing. Look, uh, if you look at a at a ten minute chart and you do some statistical research in the Nasdaq, you'll see that the first ten minute chart is actually quite an important one. And I wanted to sell be short below that. But as I was doing it, I was realizing, oh Jesus, those guys in America, they don't know what I'm talking about because you know they're so used to Al Brooks and everybody else. Um, but you know, from my point of view, this is just price action at its core. It's statistical research. I, 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 uh, I uh, what do you call that? I swing the bat because 
below uh, the, the first 10 minute bar low, I'm gonna be a seller. I'm on, it's, like a, it's like a breakout trade, especially when you have a double top high and then you close on its lows. Um, but obviously I, I, I appreciate that uh, the, the people who are, who are observing me for the first time have no idea what I am doing. And then, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but anyway, now you know. And uh, so you should have had 15 or so profit points in profit, um, probably a bit more than that. But the thing about the NASDAQ is it moves really fast. And so if you're trading futures, you're like, oh, you have to be on your toes. I regret actually not having the NASDAQ chart up there. So whilst I'm also uh, doing this uh, live trading room for Al, I'm actually also streaming in my own Telegram channel. Would you believe it? And Lenny and I have forgotten to press recording. Whoops, Lenny, we didn't get the NASDAQ trade. I'm going to show the, the NASDAQ chart for a bit. So what I like to do when I trade is I swap between time frames. It gives me a, a more holistic view of what's going on. I'm always very careful to uh, not read too much into the, 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 the bars that come before the actual trading session. You see, every morning I'll go to a website like uh, CNBC, and in there I'll make a note of, Okay, what uh, what did the, the NASDAQ close at yesterday? So I go to US market and I go, okay, it closed at, uh, you get actually, what's on my screen? So it closed at 11,405 and I'll see that in here and it's currently trading 11,340. That, that enables me to say, okay, even though that this market is what we call a pre-market, it enables me to say, got it the NASDAQ is actually trading gap down and that will enable me to trade in a certain way, such as the short position that I just executed in the, in the NASDAQ. Okay, I'm gonna move that over there as well. If I'm not mistaken, you got some pretty big companies announcing earnings later on, Amazon and Apple. Um, if I could give you a little tip of advice, but that's probably predominantly aimed at those people who are um, who are trading uh, CFDs. I don't know how reliable this strategy is in the futures market. I want to show you something. Okay. Mm. If you go to, let me show you a one minute chart. Just have to scroll back. I did that while I was uh, away from, officially I was on a little bit of a trading break, but I wasn't. I lied. So uh, when the uh, when the announcement, when the earnings announcement come out, the market is still open. And what I tend to do is I tend to do a laddering, meaning that just before, let me see if I can show you like this. So just before this bar here, so this bar here is just before the market uh, uh, closes. And I know that the earnings announcements are coming out shortly after. It's a very risky strategy. So uh, I'm not exactly saying that you should uh, fill the boat on this, but I will then begin to put orders above to buy and below. And I've done that on the basis of the research that I've done uh, past on, on prior announcements. And that'll be something like, okay, so something like this is very difficult to actually, oh, Jesus, I just realized I, you're not seeing my screen. <sighs> Sorry, we'll do it again. Here's the NASDAQ. And this is before last night's uh, earnings announcement. I think it was, oh, who was it? Can't remember, it doesn't matter who it was. Just before the market closes, I will put orders in to buy as a breakout, but I will also put in orders to sell. And I use a function at my brokerage, which is available on any single brokerage where you, you can have an order. It's called a stop order or a limit order, depending on what you're doing. And then you, you basically just have very small stop losses and slightly bigger targets. And what you're hoping for is something like this, where your orders are getting filled on a big spike up, 
but you don't wait to take profit because they've already been pre-programmed in. But I, you know, my normal trading size is, is relatively big, but I'll do this kind of trading in, in rather in rather small size. Anyway, you can uh, you can play around with that. But I I, I like uh, I like doing that. Because if it goes wrong, then I don't I don't lose an arm and a leg. So the first 15 minutes of trading has done. That's important to me because I have an identifiable strategy that I use, um, which, well, its name is irrelevant, but it does mean that I would want to be a seller of the Dow Jones below 150. Stand by in the Dow for a short position. See if I can get a better fill price. I'm shorting the Dow here at 32,140 area, give or take. And I'll have a stop loss about halfway up that bar. One of the reasons why I'm confident in executing an order like that is because both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are making new lows on the morning. This is what it looks like on a five minute chart. Got a close below prior bars low. Actually, that's not quite true because the bar doesn't close just yet. Stand by to add to the Dow. Stand by to add to the Dow position. Knowledge is nothing without the will to act. Remember that. Dow yesterday closed at 31,839. So it too has got a reasonably sized gap up. So you got a gap up and a gap down. Obviously because of earnings seasons. S&P 500 is approaching a, a load from before the news. Uh, move stop loss to break even in the Dow. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out. It's salary. Would have liked to have seen this move faster down than it did. And I kind of am thinking, why am I not just still short the NASDAQ? S&P making new lows on the day. Dow is following suit. Brilliant. Got about 40 points in profit in the Dow. Come on. Stop loss two. Is that break even? Looking good. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to see. Okay. Adding to my short position in Dow here. at 32,083. You obviously need to uh, and take profit in the Dow here. Take profit. Okay. So if I sell short at uh, 83, you have to, if you are trading futures, you have to add another 40 points. Okay, so we're taking profits. The last one I should have added way sooner, but uh, this whole thing of explaining to Al Brooks's people whilst uh, doing my tournament, I'm so used to just talking to people here in my Telegram group, which uh, I obviously do free of charge. Hey, Lenny. Can you answer me this question, Lenny, please? Um, on Al Brooks, surely they are able to see my screen, right? Good, thank you. Because otherwise I had just been talking to people for the last half an hour and they're going, what the hell is he talking about? Yep, this is what we do. Cheers. It was my birthday recently and one of my friends bought me a soda stream and I'm gonna make my own sparkling water. It's rather nice. And it's a lot cheaper, as my health conscious friend pointed out to me. And she said, and I quote, you are no longer polluting the environment with all that plastic. And I said, well, the soda stream is made out of plastic. Yes, young friend it is, but it's only made out of plastic once. Well, I had to bow to that, didn't I? There's a Tough argument to argue against. Okay. Happy birthday, Tom. That was a long time ago. 
stand by in the DAO for a short position. Please stand by in the DAO for a short position. I'm shorting the DAO here at 32,105. Uh, first stop loss at 40. Come on, Dow. Down you go. NASDAQ making new lows on the morning. S&P making new lows on the morning. Don't be such a hero, Dow. Down you go. Follow your siblings. Okay, move, stand by to move stop loss. Currently have 15 points in problem. Move, stand by to move stop loss. Move, move stop to 32, 1, 15. You want to, you can take 10 points in profit. I don't want to do that. Whoops, minus 10. Still making new lows in the S&P and the NASDAQ. Maybe I should have traded them. Isn't it typical that the market just needs to spike above your stop loss? So in case you're curious why I took profit, well, because we had a swing low down here and then you had a, a nice little candle here and I thought, hey, let's take some profit. I've added here and then up in this area here, at the breakdown area, the secondary breakdown area, I decided to uh, sell short again. Move my stop loss down. I could have moved my stop loss down too. I think at its best, I had uh, 10, 15 points in profit. But let's just see. The day is young. Dow could get interesting to short again above 49, currently trading at 28. It's an approach I like to do is I want to be a seller above prior bars highs. I think Al Brooks taught court calls it the like limit order sellers. Off to a good start, plus 17 in the Dow, minus 10 in the Dow, and plus about 15, 20 in the NASDAQ. So last five minute bar was an inside bar. Let's see what the 15 minute bar looks like. So on the 15 minute bar, you have a very distinct bull with a wig, bear with a wig, and here we are. Still think we'll make new lows in the morning. But uh, I would have loved to have shorted that a bit higher. S&P closed yesterday at 38.30. And it's currently trading at 38.20. So it's mildly down. Dow's trading at 32,130, closed at 31,008. Is that really true? Did I get that right? Yep. Dow is up 291 points on the day whilst the S&P is down eight and NASDAQ is down 124. Interesting. And we are 30 minutes into the trading session. Why is everyone asking me if I see my screen? No, you can't see my screen, Kim, unless you are locked into Al Brooks. And they didn't give us any guest visits because the last time we did, more than 1,200 people decided to try and log in and it kind of crashed their go-to. Hey, whilst we are waiting for uh, the DAO or the S&P to actually do something that I want to do, which actually could be close, please stand by. Stand by. I'm shorting the Dow here at 57. Shorting the Dow here at 57.
32,157. Oh, where's my stop loss? So I've shortened above this bar's high here. This one here. I didn't actually get a fill at 57. I got a fill at 62, but 57 is what I saw on the screen. Pretty strong move in the Dow. I got a pretty tight stop loss. And I think I'm going to be stopped out. No, yeah, stopped out. Sorry about that. Good recovery in the Dow. Very strong. And the S&P. Oh, isn't that just a wonderful pattern, huh? Bear, bull, bear. Sorry, bull, bear, bull. I always say that if you get on a, on a slightly bigger time frame, like a 15 minute chart, if you get a, a, a bull and a bear and a bull, you want to be a buyer above this. So I may have to flip buying. Stand by. So you're going to watch the 15 minute chart for a little bit. The high is 32,261. I think that's the one of the best sensations I know is that when you have a stop loss, and it actually saves you from losing a truckload. There's nothing worse than being stopped out and then the market actually actually goes in the direction you had hoped for. If you want to bet stopped out, you want to get stopped out of a trade that just, you know, bulldozes its way much, much further in the wrong direction for you. Then you feel, well, at least I had a stop loss. It'll be interesting uh, for those of you who are both in the Al Brooks channel as well as in uh, my Telegram channel, what you think latency is, is uh, go to a meeting faster than Telegram. You might want to report that to me later if you don't mind. I'd like to hear that. A friend of mine has just said, if you have both on, I hear your voice several seconds before I hear it on Telegram. That's interesting. Maybe I need to swap. Lenny says it's pretty close. Lenny is my very literate wingman, something that I have very little of whilst he has it in abundance. Good recovery in the Dow. You had an inside bar followed by a breakout higher. I decided to sell short here, swung the bat, felt like the trend warranted it, and was stopped out. What can you do, eh? Interesting to hear what people are saying about go to meeting. If that really is the case, I'll happily pay three, four hundred dollars a month to have one of those five thousand room. But I'll read the comments later. I don't want to read them now. Interesting. Dow is back down to the area where I shorted. down testing the lows of the prior by low. They're not exactly pushing in, in, in unison, these indices, are they? NASDAQ is down 85 points. Dow is actually plus 400, and the S&P is more or less flat on the day. That's three indices that represents uh, the core of the US stock market. One is up 1%, one is down 1%, and one is absolutely flatlining. 
So if you as a trader are using those as a, uh, as a gauge while you want to be long or short, not getting much help today. But I suppose it means we should think of shorts in the NASDAQ and longs in the Dow and the S&P, well, probably has to prove itself. Stand by in the Dow for a long position. Currently trading at 225. Should have pulled the trigger. You son of a bitch. My bad. Should have pulled the trigger. But you know what I was? I was a dick for a tick. I thought, ah, oh, let me just see if I can get 20. Stand by in the Dow for a short position. We've got a double top. Shorting the Dow here, 32,305. Shorted 32,305. Stop loss is 40 point away, so three, four, five. Stand by to add to the Dow. Wow. Good thing we didn't add. It's flying. I only ever add to winning trades, never add to losing trades. You see the price of the Dow up here. That's actually a very strong. So we got a, we got a bull, we got a bear, we got a bull. And I'm really thinking, aside from the double top, that this probably got some legs. Let's see. So you got a complete recovery in the S&P as well. You got a recovery in the NASDAQ. Stand by in the NASDAQ though for a short position. Let me just show you. I should be a seller than NASDAQ in this area here, so please stand by. Short in the NASDAQ here at 74. If the Dow goes below um, 
talking about 300 and 300. I want to be a seller again. Okay, stand by in the NASDAQ because we want to be moving the stop loss. And I'm going to add to my own short position. Hang on. Come on, Dow. Get the f down. I tell you what, take profit in the NASDAQ, take about 10 points profit in the NASDAQ, and close the Dow for a 10 point loss. Maybe, that, maybe a 20 point loss. Incidentally, in case you are curious, I, I trade predominantly Dow, NASDAQ, FTSE, and the DAX. But my trading size is different on each instrument. So the in the Dow, I'll trade 100 pounds a point, which is, well, in the old days, that's about $150 a point. But with the exchange rate as it is, then that's more like 100 pounds is $100. So it basically means that every Dow point is worth one hundred dollars, which I guess for you in America would be, I would be trading about thirty minis. I suppose it would add up to, wouldn't it? It's like five dollars for a mini. And the FTSE, I'll be trading three hundred pounds a point, which is thirty contracts. The Nasdaq, I'll be trading in two hundred pounds a point. So basically, if I make ten Nasdaq points and I lose twenty Dow points, that's that's the same financially um are there any moderators watching this uh, go to webinar this was perhaps someone could tell me if there's any questions any pertinent questions that i need to answer no open positions right now where are questions Oh, Lenny is in there. Lenny, are you the moderator today? No, he says he's just a normal dude. Okay. I think, I think it's Lenny that's grumpy today. He told me to F off. Wow. Lenny has never told me to F off before. Okay. Um, so what we got is on a slightly longer time frame, we've got a bull bar, bear bar, bull bar. And now we just got a bit of a lingering. We're an hour into the session. This is where it gets a little tricky, where I imagine what we need to do is to be buying retracements. It's hard to imagine we're going to get a full blown reversal back to the old lows. Uh, so I am thinking longs. Now, do I just go in and I buy? Or do I try to finesse it a little bit? Well, knowing me, I'm a stickler for a tick, which is why when I should have, when I said in the Dow that we should buy it at uh, 225, I said, stand by for longs in the Dow at 225. And I was being a prick for a tick. And then it marches 100 points off the page. Not a proud moment when you're presenting in front of a couple of thousand people. I can appreciate that. I can appreciate you thinking, oh, Jesus. Why didn't you just buy it? Because I was waiting for a slightly better price. Because that's the way I am. Because when you've been trading for as long as I have, you think that you are slightly smarter than the market. And one time I did that, my old friend, Dr. David Paul said, Tom, don't be such a D-I-C-K for a tick. He was right. He is right. Stand by in the everything for long positions because this is moving higher. 
Uh, so American traders, obviously you don't know much about us over here on the other side of the continent, but one thing that you should know about us is that we do like to trade the DAX. And uh, the DAX is the German DAX index. Now there's something about the nationality of the Germans. They're very particular. Some would even call them a little square and anal. We love them for that because they, because of that, they produced cars like Porsche, uh, Audi, which is my personal favorite, the Audi R8, mm, lovely car, Mercedes Benz, mm, Mercedes Benz GT63 E version. Ouch. You seen in one of those? And uh, people will be staring at you. That's what we trade in the morning together with the FTSE index. With the FTSE index is the moodiest, most unpredictable index you'll ever have the good fortune of trading. It is hormonal like a, I'm not going to say it because then I am going to be deemed a sexist. Uh, with a certain segment of the trading population, but it is moody as hell. I got one. It's moody as a grumpy old man. That's how moody it is. And when the trades are going our way or not, as it sometimes happens, then we like to sing to the German index. And our preferable tune is the that we are driving down the Ausbahn, which is my German accent. And it goes a little bit like yeah. having fun, fun, fun on the Ausbahn. And usually when we sing that, the trades go our way. It's not a law, but it happens. Dow Feynman is, is double topping here, micro double topping as Al Brooks so elegantly would put it. How is Al Brooks doing in Florida? Is he making bucks? Stand by for a short position in the NASDAQ after all. Actually, you know what? I don't really want to be short right now. I think I'm just going to wait a little bit. Lenny, who's the moderators today? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so someone had a question here. Rose left. Oh, Rose didn't want to be part of it. Oh, is it just you and I, Lenny? Oh, that's nice. Ro <clears throat> Lenny has asked me a question. What is the one or two things that you do every single day before you trade from a mental preparation aspect? Well, first of all, uh, I like to listen to a lot of heavy metal music preferably ACDC or Metallica. That'll get my juices flowing. It's a little bit like Michael Berry in in, uh, in the big short. He liked to drum it out as well. It gets my juices flowing. Um, I spend a considerable amount of time lying in bed with my eyes closed, visualizing taking losses. So I will be seeing a trade that goes against me and then I just cut it without remorse. And I want to tell you an interesting story, if you don't mind. I, I, I hope I, I'm not breaking the protocol here. I want to tell you a story, that ha something that happened to me, uh, <clears throat> which had an influence on the way I was, uh, 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 on, 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 on how I began to shape my trading career. I happened to be on board, I happened to be, and I really wish I told this anecdote, in uh, in my book, I was on board an airplane, and you know how when the pilot comes on and they go, "Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome." The weather was great, and you know, and they just talk this drool, and no one is listening. No one is listening. It's like, ah, oh, just get over with it. But this pilot, he was different, and he said, 
ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Boycott from, you know, whatever. Um, on our today's journey from Copenhagen to No Bodies Done, I uh, have the great pleasure of welcoming you, Tracy and Patricia and John and Bob as the crew. They are going to make sure that you are comfortable and blah, blah, blah. So far, it just followed the normal protocol, but then he kicked out of normal protocol and he said, now I know what you want to do. I know you want to glance on your phones and your iPads and all of that, but I ask you to pay close attention for a few minutes because it may just save your life. Now, I hear you say, wow, that is a bit of an unusual story he's going on about here. So let me tell you a little bit about, and this is his words here, not me, his words. So let me tell you a little bit between the difference between short-term memory and long-term memory. Now, long-term memory is that thing that we have access to all the time, but short-term memory is something that we'll only remember for a, a short period of time. Now, here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, if there was an emergency, and God forbid there was an emergency because I've been, I've been trained to handle this plane, and if I'm not good enough, then at least my co-pilot, he will be there for us. But having said that, in the unlikeliest of, and, you, and by this point, everybody's put down the phone going, okay, what the hell is this guy going on about? And I immediately, I grabbed my scrabble pad and going, okay, this is getting interesting. So he basically started talking about, listen, if you are in an emergency situation, your memory, your short term, sorry, your long term memory and your short term memory doesn't work so well anymore. So the reason why we are telling you what to do before we take off, it's not because we suspect that you haven't been on an airplane before. On the contrary, you, we know that you are frequent flyers. However, if we were in a panic situation, there is the very likelihood that you will forget everything because you are in a mode of panic. Now I'm going to add a little bit here because when you are in a mode of, mode of panic, your body shuts down. Your body shuts down its glucose levels. And therefore, you will not have access as you think you will. Now, it reminds me of a, a, a story that I, I, I read about someone trying to escape a burning hotel. And I, uh, I read that they were unable to get out of the door. No matter how much they pulled that door, they could not get out of the door except the problem was that it had gone into a panic and you didn't have to pull to get the door open. You had to push to get the door open. And so the reason why I go through this, shall we call pre-flight, is not because I don't know how to take a loss, but when you're all of a sudden faced with a, a loss on your account, your body goes into a slight panic mode. And that's why I practice it in my mind's eye before I start trading. It is like a pre-flight routine. We all know where the emergency exit is, but do we know where the emergency exit is when it matters? Someone said here, Christian said, you're biased. Think about a flip. I'll tell you what, Christian, why don't you flip off? How can I be biased on a double top, man? That's one thing that, because I'm not charging for this, I can tell people just to bugger off. And I do frequently. I don't take shit from anybody. Literally, correctness is not part of my repertoire or vocabulary. So what we got here is on the 15 minute chart, we got a bull bear bull. And I think the market is biased higher, but I'm also acutely aware 
of the significant double top on the NASDAQ. And I think I'm just going to have to wait for a better entry. So stand by for a long position in the NASDAQ. But nothing done yet. <clears throat> The reason for a, a long position in the NASDAQ is because we've gone below prior bars low, but I think there'll be limit bias there because of the, such a strong bull bar on the way up. The current 15 minute bar still has a little way to go. So I can't really say that I got much of a signal just yet. I need to see where this bar closes. Same in the S&P. <clears throat> oh, it's a... Uh, no, please don't get me wrong. I'm not being rude to people, but on the other hand, I also need to draw a line between being the benevolent sage that gives everything away. And actually, I need to make money for myself. I'm not charging for this. I don't collect X thousands of dollars for running a live trading room. And so it's a very fine line what the people is allowed to say to me. Okay, let's look at the five minute chart in the Dow it just went below all the past. That that's kind of a bit of a hallmark that they are bias about. So please stand by for a long position in the Dow and also in the Nasdaq. Please stand by. But I would love to wait for a minute. I'd love to see where this bar is closing. Hey Lenny, there used to be 185 attendees in the go-to. Now there's only 181. You think people are getting bored? NASDAQ just made a low at 333, three, three, currently trading at 340. Dow's trading at 320 and low at 293. Not convinced what to do one way or another. Well, I'll show you NASDAQ. It's what NASDAQ is doing. So you actually have two bear bars in the NASDAQ. And technically, we should be sellers below this low. I haven't bought. I want to be a little patient.
sort of just I'm looking at a weekly chart here. I'm just sort of beginning to wonder if there's a bigger picture play that I need to be aware of here because the Nasdaq is beginning to look weak again. Stand by could be a short position in the Dow actually. Stand by. I'm shorting the Dow here at 85. I'm shorting the Dow here at 85. I'm just beginning to think when I'm looking at the weekly chunk, I'm going, wow, I wonder if there's sellers up here. Do you see this? This is the weekly chart in the Dow. I'm thinking, wow, that is, I mean, it's a good recovery. But I'm just wondering if there's profit taking into these highs here. Take a look at the, the Dow. You have one, two, three, four, you have five very positive days. All right, let's see. So <clears throat> if this had been a DAX position, would have been singing something like that, like, uh, we are short Sedax and we are having fun down to Alsobahn. That's the kind of thing we would be, because we're kind of, the people that I attract, they are a bit childish like I am. Incredibly hardworking, very proficient, incredibly childish. Because that's kind of our way of, letting steam off from this rather intense business. Uh, stop loss to break even. Hmm. I'm a bit annoyed with the trading today. I am not getting any runners. And the runner that I could have gotten, I hesitated because I was a royal douche for a few pips. Yeah. I'm very hard on myself because it works for me. But the way that the Dow is trading now, it could go down to new lows for the day. As unlikely as it sounds, but look at that 15 minute bar. Uh, I'm going to do it in an Al Brooks voice now. Hello, there's Al Brooks. This is a new high, but it closes below the prior bar low. And this is like a, an outside bar. Oh, God. I wish we had some inside bars. That's my favorite when he goes, hello, this is Al Brooks. And this is an inside bar followed by an inside bar. I think we need to stand by to sh for another short position in the Dow. I'm short in the Dow here again, about 95, sorry, 90. I'm going to put a stop loss at 330. Uh, one minute break from my point. Uh, one minute break. I just need to replenish my aqua.
someone just is saying that Put is speaking, is that Putin? You mean? Oh, I see. Well, that's not usually not good news, is it? What do you want to do? Close the position and wait? Do you think he's going to say, I'm sorry? <clears throat> Don't really see him as the apologetic type. I am short the down. <clears throat> Stand by in the NASDAQ for a short position. Short on the NASDAQ here at 11,331. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because we're just above this bar here. Well, I'm basically selling into whatever resistance I can think there is here. That's what I'm doing. What do you think, boys and girls? Do you think we should uh, expect new lows on the day? Is that what we're betting on now? I know it would be great at Walter, but is that what we're betting on here? What do you think? I'm undecided. Dow seems a little more resilient than uh, the Nasdaq does.
I moved my stop loss in NASDAQ to break even. Come on down. Why do you have to spoil the party? But it is. So status is that I am short both the NASDAQ and the Dow. And NASDAQ is doing all right. Dow is annoying me. Which is silly because I shouldn't really be taking it personally. But I do. Don't be emotional. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is so sad that, okay, it is making new load. Come on, that NASDAQ. <laughs> I have uh, children to support and ex-wives to pay off and whatnot. Come on. There we go. That's my girl, boy, I don't know, whatever. Okay, let's take profit in the NASDAQ. Taking profit in NASDAQ, closing for about 30 odd points profit. Closing at 11,296. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Plus 35. Nice. Of course, I was never in doubt this was going to happen. You do know that, don't you? I was never in doubt because I got this secret indicator that I've developed. It's, uh, it's in fact so secret that I shouldn't even be talking about the fact that I had a secret indicator, but I do. So now the cat's out of the bag, but there you go. I, I mean, just, just me saying it to you could get me into big, big trouble. Now it is for sale if you want to buy it, but you know what? It's uh, gonna have to make me an offer. <laughs> Someone just posted, "Careful, Tom. They might actually believe you." That's that's true. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, <laughs> I I I'm not selling anything. I'm just uh, actually I do have something to sell. I have a book that I've written. Okay, I'm selling it for, wait, wait for it, wait for it, one million dollars. <laughs> That's a... Uh... Stand by in the Dow. Stand by. Take profit in the Dow now. Take profit here at 33, 34. Stand around. And that's a good exit.
Okay, there's some questions from the chat. Uh, Tom should be here more often. Uh, more Tom. Okay, Stacy. Easy there, girl. Okay. Uh -huh. Tom, with today's PA, should you only short the NQ and long the down PP? Oh, price action. Duh. I'm not Al Brooks, you know. I have to get used to what you guys are talking about. With today's PA, price action, should you only short the NQ and long the down? You know what? That is... Uh, <clears throat> Um, I don't know who that gentleman is. He's called YC47ID, but whoever you are, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a, a brief little story. When we trade the FTSE and the DAX in the morning, at times they, the two indices will really diverge. So imagine an index. Now, just to, in, in your mind's eye, imagine two indices side by side, two charts, two five minute charts. And every single time, one chart makes new highs for the day. The other chart just barely makes it up to the prior high for the day or the prior swing for the day. That is a prime candidate for saying, you know what, let's just be short the index because uh, to, let's just be short the, the weak index because it's incredibly how often these indices will actually just affect each other. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, there is a lot of truth in that. Look, guys, I'm, you know me, I will do anything to cut latency down. And if you think that I should take a subscription to go to meeting, frick, we'll do it. I mean, it's peanuts. It's like 300, 400 pounds a month. We'll, we'll do it. We'll just pass around the charity box at the end of the month. Ooh, Lenny, actually, that's a point. We haven't done that for a few months, haven't we? Lenny hasn't gotten paid for several months, bless him. <laughs> I shouldn't actually, I shouldn't laugh. That's actually really cruel. Sorry, Lenny. <clears throat> I'll tell you this. We will try go to webinar. Absolutely. I, I don't see why we wouldn't. It's just the, 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 the issue that I have with any other solution that Telegram is, and then it doesn't go to people's mobile phones. But uh, we are having fun, fun, fun on the house bond. It's been a good, uh, for me, it's been a good, but uh, I wonder how you guys have gotten on with my fills, because if there's latency, then that could be an issue. Does Al Brooks ever trade live like this and has have latency issues? Yeah. <clears throat> Too many people are complaining about latency. I don't know if they're the odd ones out, but uh, you know what? Happy to just do a quick poll. I'm just doing, doing it now. Okay, here it comes. This is an anonymous uh, latency report, okay? Uh, yes, more than 10 seconds. Yes, more than five seconds, but less than 10 seconds. Normal, less than five seconds. Can you just fill that in, please? Let's see where we land. All right, so, so far, half is saying 169 votes. Half is saying normal, less than five seconds. We got 36% saying Yes, more than five seconds, but less than 10 seconds. And then we got 15% saying yes to more than 10 seconds. But, you know, it could just be that the ones that are complaining are the loudest are the ones that are contacting me, which I understand. I perfectly understand. And look, guys, I'm absolutely happy to try anything that you might suggest. 
you could do you all those things like StreamYard, Zoom, uh, Smoke Signal, Morse code, you name it. Coming up to a double top in, in the NASDAQ, please stand by. I really need to be less of a dick for a tick. You know that? I have a double top in the in the NAS that is weak already. <sighs> Man. I'm beginning to think that these indices are weak. I'm looking over for some confirmation over in the uh I always look what's going on in the Dow. Sorry, in the FTSE and the NASDAQ. Man, I can't talk. I always look what's going on in the FTSE and the DAX, even though I'm trading the US session. They're often telling me a story I may not get. I had a short position early on in the, in the sterling against dollar. Checking my other currency positions. That's a double top and a half in in Sterling Aussie. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, man. Okay, here again. Okay. My Euro yen would have been filled. I cancelled it. It's looking weak. It really is. I want to show that that weekly chart again. That's a bit. Oh, I wonder. Hey. Eh? Sorry for the lack of trades in the last, uh, oops, in the last uh, 30 minutes, but uh, so I'll just weigh my options. Is anyone listening in right now that is also at the uh, the Florida event? Okay, I got a market that on the 10 minute chart in the NASDAQ is just going bear bar, bull bar, bear bar, 
and now it's ballpark and it's like boring, 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 boring. Uh, and he, Lenny once taught me something. He said, Tom, don't fiddle with the middle. I don't really know if it was in the context of something else or if it was in the context of charts. Um, but needless to say, I listened. And it feels like right now that if I want to sell short the NASDAQ, I need to be shorting at the higher end of the range. And the Dow actually is surprisingly where I would like to be a seller in the Dow. And very soon, actually. Oh, I got a spy in, I'm not saying the name. Come on, stand by uh, for short positions. I'm shorting the Dow here at, oh, come on. I'm just about to call a short at, at 32,200 32, and it goes 84. I can't call that. Come on. If you just execute it, you, you're going to have to, I can't call a trade where it's 20 points lower already. Knowing that there's the latency there is, I'm short the Dow at 30,000, 32,200. And then like it just caught, catches a vacuum. Here we go. <clears throat> There's a price everybody can get. Basically trying to short the top of the range. Stop loss to break even. If I get stopped out now, I am going to be Livid. <clears throat> you know what I uh... Well, I know that everybody could get that price, that's for sure. But I've already been stopped out from for, for zero. And oh my God, that is annoying. You've got to be kidding me. I unfortunately don't think I'm going to be doing any more Al Brooks uh, webcasts. I think that my language might not be to everyone's liking. I'm sorry. But I so had that short nailed. Shit. Or should I say sugar, honey, iced tea?
Notice how the NASDAQ is just consolidating. The will to act is everything. Knowledge is nothing without the will to act. Oh, yeah, uh, don't short the DAX. Like, don't short the Dow or don't have to stop a tight to stop loss. Got it. Apparently, my my German is very good. I am not sure who is the uh, source behind that comment. I think they might not be German themselves. Guys, I have streamed for a couple of hours. Getting a little, uh, a little frustrated. Have you had a good time today? So uh, um, that's the that's the status. I did better. I made about thirteen thousand in the Nasdaq and six thousand in the Dow, but the Dow could have been a lot, lot better. Jesus, good lord! I could have done so much better. I actually lost this morning in the in the DAX. We have this uh, strategy we trade called the school run strategy. And I was waiting forever and ever. And I, I finally took it, lost 19. And, and then I had to leave the screen. And then it just absolutely pummels in the opposite direction and, uh, and does really well. It's so frustrating when you spent so many months investigating a, uh, a, an approach to strategy. And then and then you, yeah. Okay, is it time to uh, say goodbye? Did you understand the story I told you about the pilot and the short-term memory and the long-term memory? Well, if not, okay. Uh, <clears throat> to the 164 people that are still in the go to webinar, thank you so much for putting up with my language. Thank you for putting up with latency. I hope that you made some money as a result of my live trading today. I hope that I also educated you. Uh, all of a sudden, my, my negative barrier bias came in from watching the weekly chart and, uh, I think that actually turned out to be a really good call. Hang on, my phone's ringing. I think my mobile phone number has been sold on the dark net or something because over the last uh, few days, I've got a barrage of calls from really obscure numbers. There you go. Uh, fast moving later, I got about breathing for the days just to let you know that what the latency does, no harm done. Thanks for today. Happy that you're back. You are welcome, Elm. Look, hi. Hey, Tom. Hey, is that you, that, Rose? I, that was me calling you. <laughs> oh, was it? No. Oh, you the Jesus. questionable number. Well, it was uh, <laughs> that wasn't that questionable, Rose. It was just 
<laughs> okay, you did great today. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I didn't think I did very well at all. <laughs> it was a really bad price action. We agree. Yeah. But you know what? We have to. You can't just play. You can't just play on the good days. You have to play in everything. And I think True. what really, what really turned me was looking at the at the at the weekly chart, going, "Wow." That is bumping its ugly head right up again. And it kind of just turned my bias slightly from <laughs> being from normally being okay, we need to be belong this market to actually this doesn't look so convincing after all. And it kind of saved the day. I got I got 60 odd NASDAQ points out of it and, and and 60 in the Dow, but my Dow tally should have been in, in the hundreds because of that. I mean, I'm just looking at this uh, five minute chart. We trade, yes, most of the time here in the trade room. I've struggled myself. It's up, it's down, and then it's up again. And then Lenny and I, we were just chatting. Sorry, Lenny. So uh, we actually sold it. We sold all the way up top, and then we came all the way down to, I think, like 38, 42. That's where I wrapped up and got out because it was a mess. And then you try to sell. It stayed there for a while. It's the same price action, but then it sold. So now I'm crying because I took my profit where I was supposed to hold it. So, well, there, uh, you know what? I, I think having those kind of emotions are perfectly natural, but I don't think they're very good for us to. Yeah. Uh, because when you look at it, you know, you know, what are you, Rosie, a girl in your 20s? You'll probably trade for another 60 years. And so what does it matter that on Thursday, the 27th of October, you could have done a bit better? I think the whole exactly. point here is that we just we just try and, and learn from it. And and but part of what we need to learn is also just to accept that we simply cannot get every single move, which is can't. And it's always and it's always easy after the fact. Just, oh, why didn't I just sell there? It's like a double top and whatever. But when you're yeah. in the thick of it and your emotions are invested in it. It's very different. Yeah, I agree. Now, I think you you answered everybody's questions, and I know you're tired. You want to go, but I have a burning question. Oh, I'm Can not I tired ask? at all. You know, I've, okay. I've had some. I had some Roybosch tea. You know, I'm flying. <laughs> <laughs> so I got your book. So I'm reading it, and I love it. So who is the girl at the Bloomberg terminal? Right. Okay, I get that question a lot. Actually. <laughs> The, the the girl at the Bloomberg terminal is she's an unknown. Um, she, when I worked at the uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Chase Manhattan Bank, uh, I got interested in trading, and this is back in in ninety seven ninety eight, and I managed to position myself very close to the Bloomberg terminal, and there was a woman whose job was actually to extract data from the Bloomberg terminal. Hmm. And she would sort of periodically come over and she would uh, uh, and, and need to use the, the station, the, 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 the Bloomberg station. But none of us other in this, it was like a middle office. I wasn't a trader. Uh, it was, uh, we didn't have any work there, but I would be over there every single time. And one time she sneaked up from behind me and she whispered, if you love this so much, why don't you pursue this as your life? In other words, she's saying, what are you doing here? That is a good story. Now I know. Thank you for sharing. So it was like, it was like a, uh, it was a nod. It was a, it was a, a, a dedication to, you know what? There, there was someone who was an unknown and she basically said, D don't, don't waste your life here. If, if that's not what you're passionate about. Don't make my mistake. Yeah. I liked it. It it meant yeah. a lot to me. It came at that right time and I, I quit relatively shortly after. And I set out on my own. <laughs> and I crashed and burned. But hey, that's what you do. Yeah, but she probably knows you and remembers you and probably now know how you're doing. So yeah, who knows? <laughs> thank you. Well, thank I'm you. Glad I'm glad you like the book, but Rose, let me ask you a question. Did you read the, the chapter that should have been in there? The, the, what actually made me uh, write the book? I'm or still on the early, 
I think I've went through about 60 pages so far. Lenny, would you be able to send Rose that PDF, which is the reason why Best Loser Wins actually came about? And then could you share it in the, um, uh, <clears throat> can you share it in the GoToWebinar? Yeah, that'd be great because I have the audio. I just got the book last week, so I'm still reading. We should yeah, have Lenny's it in front gonna, of me right now. Lenny's going to send it to you now, and he and you're more than welcome to give it to the people uh, who was in the go-to meeting. But essentially, it's sure. a story about how this book actually came about. And I regret it not being in the book, but I forgot it. The editor forgot it, and that's a real shame. But your story about how you made your, I think it was um, Crohn's that, um, I'm not quite sure, it's, uh, market crashed and then you actually ended up making money and coming to UK. That yes. story was really good. That's such a funny story because those days, um, so for those of you who are not familiar with it, so I worked in an amusement park in the evenings and I, and I worked as a clerk in a pension fund in the day to save up money to go and study in England. And this is in September 1992, and I had to convert my my savings from Danish kroners into British pounds. And I was on a really tight budget, and I could just barely make ends meet to get my education. But then George Soros and others shorted the pound, and they, they did so. And that's what the, the, the chapter is called, hot dog, the price of a hot dog in Paris. Essentially, it just made it possible for me to go through and get my education with no debt because I converted my Danish kroners to British pounds uh, just in the days after the big pound crash in September 1992. Yeah. And, I, and I got about 33% more uh, British pounds for my Danish kroners than I would have had I converted it, say, two weeks earlier. That was good. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, like, it's just one of those stories where you think, wow, is this really true? Like, yeah, it's really true. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't think there are no other questions here. So if you want to wrap up, we don't want to hold you. I'm all right. I, I, look, I, I can carry on, but um, is my language an issue? You mean your potty mouth? We love it. Yes, my potty mouth. <laughs> because if it is, I'll, I'll just, you know, it just sounds so phony when you say sugar, sugar, honey, iced tea instead of shit, right? It's like, oh, really? Why don't you just say shit? I mean, I don't and, know how Chan feels about it, but it really didn't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm Turkish American, so it's part of our lives, you know, how we talk. You know, have you ever heard of Turkish sailors? No. <laughs> so, well, you might want to Google. But I have to behave because, you know, I'm a girl. Well, of so, course. Uh, <laughs> you are proper, Rose. We know you're proper. <laughs> I try to be. Anyway, well, anyway, I, um, thank you for your support. What I find really interesting is that, you know, I run a Telegram group myself and people are reporting, some people are reporting that the latency that they experience on GoTo meeting is less than the latency they're experiencing through my Telegram channel. Now, obviously, there's a price difference as well. Telegram is free of charge and GoTo meeting will come with a price tag, but I'll happily pay for that difference if it meant that people had no latency. Because it's it's a real shame. Let's say I call it a short in the Dow at thirty two thousand two hundred, and then people see it when it's trading at thirty two thousand one eighty, twenty points lower. That 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 adds up. That means something. So while I'm plus twenty there, just break even. Uh, for the go to meeting, I can speak to that. I can also speak to Zoom. I don't remember having any kind of questions or uh, concerns coming in like that. So we were fine on our end. Okay. Okay, fine. But, uh, but, but, but let me read this. Uh, so I'm not, so there's a guy called Julian here. So I'm not sure what to do or what's the problem, but I'm about 650 points in minus while you should be in positive. Okay, 650 might be a little excessive, isn't it? Oh, that is quite yeah. a lot. Maybe something to do with his internet? I don't know. Yeah, I think 650 might be 65. But still, it's, uh, it, it is a concern to me because I would really like to provide a service, even though it's free of charge, but I'd really like to provide something that, that doesn't have these issues. 
Um, I, Rose, are you in Florida? No, I couldn't make it. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, next time. Next time, okay. Rose, thank you so much for the invitation. It's a real honor to uh, speak to you and be part of it. I think when I'm listening to you, you're doing absolutely amazing. Your knowledge of price action is like, it's it's out of this world. I wish I knew and had your skill set. It, it's incredible. Uh, but hey, I'm still relatively young. I might learn. <laughs> okay. Are you going to well, write a book? Very nice. Thank you. But you don't need any help. <laughs> mm, well, you can always get better. Are you going to write a book about it, Rose? Um, write another one. Yeah. We'll Rose, it. Rose is the, um, someone is asking my group, who's Rose? Rose is the administrator uh, over at the Al Brooks, and she is running Al Brooks. So if you guys want to, you're going to have to pay for it, but it's not that large. What, $100 a month, Rose? Um, it is, but I'm just one of the uh, moderators, one of the streamers. So we have Al Brooks, we have also Brad Wolf, and we have Tim, uh, and we have you now. So I don't run the whole um, entire trade room myself, but it no, is but ninety-nine dollars a month. Yes, it's ninety-nine dollars a month, and Rose is the the head trader there after Al Brooks, and she really knows her stuff. So if you want to, uh, so the, and speaking to people in my Telegram channel, if you want to, um, do they have a? I think they might even have a two-day free trial. Uh, but, yes, we do have yeah. two-day free trial. Uh, we also have all of the recorded live webinars available for download um, for the subscribers. So where would my people go to? Is it Brooks Price Action or where would they Brooks, go? Brooks, yes, brookspriceaction.com slash rose okay. or brookspriceaction.com. Brookspriceaction.com forward slash rose or just brookspriceaction.com. You could and, and, you could just and, use and, brooks and then you can go in there and you can uh, maybe request a free trial if you don't want to hear my Actually, voice. Actually, hold on. Let me, oh, I might have typed it wrong, but just checking something. Yeah, Brooks Price Action, Brooks Price Action .com. All right. A pleasure to be able to promote you, Rose. Um, you look <laughs> after you. yourself. And are you going to take over from here? Because otherwise I might just. Um, uh, no, we can just um, uh, sign out. This is all good. All right. Well, will you do that for me? Because yep, I, I will do that. Uh, thank you very much, people at the GoTo webinar. I'm just going to stay here in Telegram for a moment. Bye, Rose. Bye. Take care. You too.